Hi, I'm John Kindervog, Field CTO of Palo Alto Networks, and I'm joined today by our CEO, Mark McLaughlin. Welcome, Mark. Thanks, John. Glad to be here. You know, I'm really excited to be here and talk to you. And as you know, I've been a history buff, and, and I've been influenced by some of the great thinkers throughout history who have helped me understand a little bit more about strategy. And so when I look at how you know military theorists and other people have looked at strategy, I think there's some great lessons we can be learned. Uh, as a graduate of West Point, you were a former Army officer. You've had different sets of experience maybe than other people in the industry. How does that affect your view of cybersecurity? Well, you know, a couple of ways. One is just uh, thinking strategically is always a good idea, you know, <laughs> rather than matter if you're in the military or not, right? Uh, and certainly for companies. Uh, so, you know, what does that really mean? Like the long-term viewpoints, a very clear understanding of your objectives, how you're going to achieve them over time, right? So this all goes into strategic thinking and how to execute against that. The second thing, I actually think there's the analogy here relative to cyber, and you've heard me say this many times, that, you know, we are in a battle from a cyber perspective. Um, it's going to take a very long time in order to have, uh, you know, positive results in this. I'm an optimist, as you know, mm -hmm. uh, but you also have heard me say many times to folks that when we think about um, how it's going to turn out, it's never over, but how it's going to turn out as far as it being much better than it is today, it's going to take 10, 20 years. You know, we need to have a, a long view on this. And not a lot of people like to hear that, but I think that's the reality. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Now, as a, as a West Point grad, you would have been, you know, you would have been hearing about four levels of military theory that, that come down through history. Uh, and those, those, uh, those levels of, of theory, starting with uh, grand strategy, uh, which I define as the ultimate goal, right, in a simplistic way. Uh, strategy, the next level down, the big idea that we need to use to achieve the grand strategy. Tactics, the things we use to achieve the big idea. And then finally, operations, the way we use all those things. That, that is something that's been very influential to me. Uh, from your perspective, how important is it to to not think just tactically and operational, but to think strategically and especially to have a real grand strategy. I think it's really important whether we kind of realize it here collectively or not, and that's what we're doing, right? Um, intentionally, right? And so if you kind of work down those levels, uh, you know, our grand strategy is things that we've talked about of how are we going to make the internet safe, right? So right. you've heard me speak and others speak about the concept of the cyber moonshot and taking fundamentally different views on how we do cybersecurity because it's so important in the digital age. And can we have an ambitious goal of making the internet safe in 10 years time? Right now that's, lots of people say it's not possible, but if we don't have some objective that's ambitious out there, um, it doesn't f allow us to free our minds about how to think about things in a way that it would be very liberating, I believe, as opposed to constraining and stop incrementing things, right? So that right. would be the highest level on that. Underneath that then is, uh, for, as a company, our mission of saying we are going to, you know, we are going to maintain um, and build trust in the digital age, right? So the mission statement as a strategy for a company is also very broad. It's below the grand strategy, but it's part of that. And it's very broad, though, because it, it allows us intentionally to do a lot of things that are not specific about the business relative to today or right, tomorrow or even right. next year, right? So that's why we have that in place. We come down a level from that and we say, how do we make that real? Well, we're driving increasingly high degrees of automated prevention constantly, and we're constantly improving the consumption model. That's how our, that's how what we can do right. inside of those other two. And then we get down to the, the lowest level on that, which is the execution aspects of it. But how are we going to make that happen, right? And those are the things people are probably more familiar with because we speak about those in terms of the goals uh, what are we going to do this year mm -hmm. um, and over the next three years in our three-year strategic plan against these higher order bits as you work your way up there. So it's a very uh, very familiar paradigm. We're, we're running against that paradigm. We have been for quite some time as a company. Well, I found it very helpful to take these historic ideas and map them to the cybersecurity landscape and the cyber war we're in today. So I personally define our grand strategy that we, we should have as stopping data breaches because I think it's the most dangerous thing that can happen to any organization from a digital perspective. And, and it feels to me that all the other problems that, that we have, DDoS and things, fall out underneath that. And, and so I've defined a, 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 
a strategy called Zero Trust, which is why you brought me over here to Palo Alto Networks to help have a strategic vision that's missing from our world. And then we, of course, make the, the tactics, the tools and the technologies and the operational aspects, the platforms and the policies. Uh, how important, though, is it to protect data? That's one of the big a lot of people say to me, no, we're, we're, more, we're, we're more worried about, you know, keeping everything going. And you're one of the few guys in leadership talking about protecting data. Talk to me about that. Well, I think it's, uh, I think it's very important that uh, you take a data-driven approach to this. And what I, or data-driven is probably the wrong angle on that because it sounds like analysis. What I mean by that is, um, at the end of the day, what are we trying to protect? We're actually trying to protect the data. Your data, my data, company's data, right? That's what people are after. You know, they're after that either because they can monetize it, um, there's some other value to them, or they just want to disrupt it. You know, there's, you know, maybe don't want the data, just want to destroy it or disrupt the data. Right. For some political reasons, it doesn't matter. Um, but so it's a data, it's a data centric viewpoint to say that's what you have to protect. And by the way, it's everywhere. Okay. Right. So when, as soon as you, if you grok those two points, right? Mm hmm. The approach has to be a data-centric or data-driven approach, which is where is it, right? And I have to protect it exactly the same way, regardless of where it is. And by the way, we don't know where it's going to be next year. Right. You know, we really don't know that, right? Um, we wouldn't be talking about cloud six years ago, right? Or, you know, something along those lines. And that's what everybody's talking about, right? So it's very possible sitting here in three years or five years' time that there may be different, I'll call it locations, for, I hate to use a physical term like that, but where data may be resident, computed, used, uh, stored, that we're not even thinking about yet, right? And if that happens, we have to modify, right, and change um, how we do things as well to make sure we cover off protecting that data the exact same way we would do if it was in a more traditional sense in a data center. So right, true. That's, that's the view. So let's go back to the cyber moonshot idea, because I know you just came back from Davos not too long ago, and you reiterated your call for a cybersecurity moonshot. In fact, I'm going to quote you. Uh, I am therefore pro proposing a cybersecurity moonshot with a simple yet powerful goal, make the internet safe in 10 years. To achieve this goal, we must overcome whatever skepticism we have that perhaps it's too difficult or the time frame too condensed. We must recognize the simple reality these are urgent times that call for urgent measures. Unless we are able to strive for and reach this cybersecurity moonshot, the highest aspirations we have for the digital age may be delayed or deferred. Talk to me about the vision behind the cybersecurity moonshot. Well, the, the idea there is, is that um, if you accept, which I think hopefully you, most people would, but if you accept that we live in a digital age, we accept that the digital age is driving mass amounts of productivity. That's the positives, right? Uh, but the very same, um, the very same aspects of the digital capabilities driving all the productivity are its soft underbelly, right? So right. that's the security, that's the trust aspect of things. Um, so the better we get, the more widely adopt digital technology. We also have all, uh, widely expanded the chance and pro the probability that we're going to have a problem from a security and, our, and, our, and trust and privacy and all the things that we worry about today, right? So if that's true, and I think that's true, which, you, which is all of the economy, consumer life, business life is increasingly heading to digital transformation, then we better protect it, right? Because otherwise the consequences are massive, right? Right. And if, if, as soon as you accept that point, you have to kind of take a hard look at things, whether it's diplomacy, politics, or education, or for us, technology and say, are we actually doing everything we can to ensure we protect our way of life in the digital age? Back to our mission statement as a company, right? right yeah. Are we doing that, right? And I would argue and have argued that um, uh, generally, as a society, in approaching this problem, we've been more incremental in nature than comprehensive in nature. So if we go back and use the original moonshot, and there's other examples, by the way, I just chose the moonshot because people are very familiar with it from a historical perspective, Right. and say, um, in the event that there's a situation from a national, international perspective where something's very important that we figure out how to get it right, everybody can rally around it, you need the rallying point, you need the rallying cry to say, what could success look like here, right? So when John Kennedy laid out the original moonshot and said, mm -hmm. we're going to put a man on the moon and bring him back alive, and we're going to do it in, in a decade's time. Right. 
you know, if you go back and read the history on that, there was a tremendous amount of skepticism as to whether that could actually happen at all, and certainly within that time frame, right? But the, the challenge was laid on the table and the uh, requisite uh, thinking started, right? And people, societies, industries, the government, international, rose to the challenge. And you know what? It turned out, made it happen. <laughs> right, absolutely. So, I watched it. I watched it happen as a kid. Yeah, so. Right, so, right, and, and it's, uh, you know, it's, a great, it's a great thing, right? So I think that from a cyber perspective, we actually have to, we have to help ourselves. We have to liberate our thinking. We have to step back from the incrementalist approach and say, what's the art of the possible? Like if we weren't yeah. so tied into how we think about things today, and uh, that's not critical in the sense of there's tremendous amount of, of work, intelligence, money, resources, fantastic motives. So not critical of that. I'm saying it's if we step back from that a minute and say, if we gave ourselves a, an objective, you know, that was defined in scope and time and very aggressive, would we do things differently? And I think we would. I think we would in a whole host of ways. Right. We're certainly trying to do that as a company of just totally changing the game from a technical perspective and not continuing on with the same old you know, legacy kind of approaches and point solutions and all the things we're, you know, we're very familiar with, which we don't do as a company. We need that kind of thinking, um, not just in the technology sector, we need it in the education sector, we need it in the government sector, in the diplomacy sector, and I can go down the list, but it's, it's, a, very, uh, it's a very optimistic Right, message, right, right, right. <laughs> Meant to be. Well, clearly, I'm in favor of an aspirational North Star to give us some strategic vision, which I think has been lacking. But other cybersecurity leaders have been somewhat skeptical of the cybersecurity moonshot idea, saying it's too vague or it lacks clarity. They suggest we focus on purely tactical issues, such as stopping DDoS or something like that. Mark, uh, what's your response to the skepticism? Uh, if if anybody is engaged in the conversation as a result of proposing the cyber moonshot, it's positive. Let me start with that. So I don't I actually I don't have any skepticism on the skepticism. Right, I only have uh, I view it all as very constructive. The whole point of this is to get the dialogue going on how to do things differently. There, if we said we're trying to make the internet safe in ten years, by the way, I realize that may be a unachievable. If nothing else, at least extremely ambitious, right? Right, right. I understand that point, right? Um, when you say that, um, it would imply that many, many things would would turn out to be true. Like, what does safe mean, right? In mm -hmm. the first place? And how would you do that? You know, you mentioned stopping all breaches, for example, or data breaches, right? It could be it could be eliminating DDoS attacks. Uh, I could give you a list of a hundred of those. They're all important. So I'm not deminimizing the importance of any of those. I'm just saying that I believe that any one of those in and of itself is good, moves the ball forward. It doesn't right. substantially change the game, um, but we can organize them all under a North Star yeah. principle, and I think that would be great. Right? So I don't, actually don't have any criticism of the criticisms. <laughs> I think as soon as uh, somebody comes to the table and brings up an idea, then we're you know, mission accomplished in the sense that we got the discussion going and we're going to use these as organizing thoughts. So. Now, it seems to me, as the CEO of one of the world's largest cybersecurity companies, that you have a distinct advantage over some of the other leaders, uh, especially those in the public sector who, who don't make the security technology. Uh, and you can build a company for the express purpose of accomplishing a cybersecurity moonshot vision. What are you going to do for, as a leader in cybersecurity and a leader of this company, Palo Alto Networks, to make this a reality. Yeah, I'm not sure if we have the advantages uh, over other folks, whether they're in the government or in other private sector. Um, I think what we have is a, um, a privilege. And the okay. privilege is one where, um, the, because of, of a different approach, um, different technical capabilities, um, a great team, you know, we're executing uh, relatively well as a company. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that gives us the privilege and the responsibility to be leaders, right? Along with other leaders, government leaders, private sector leaders, and I've spoken to many of them, right? About can, how do we continue to come together in order to have aspirational goals and achieve them, right? We absolutely will compete in our industry every day of the week with fierce, competitors who my respect right 
But there are things that we need to agree upon that we need to cooperate on, like the Cyber Threat Alliance, for example. Right. A fantastic example of that. Public-private partnerships that we have and other people uh, and other companies have as well. Those are all good things. As Palo Alto Networks, we're going to do a few things. The first is uh, we are going to continue to try to um, engage the discussion, engage people in the discussion to think big, to think broad, to think ambitiously like the moonshot idea. Uh, we are going to, as a company, have a very broad mission statement. We've had for a long time. We're going to keep doing that because I said that allows us to actually do things um, that are in line with our mission that really don't have anything with the business this afternoon. They maybe not for five years, maybe not for 10 years, right? right. Um, but it gives us the flexibility to do that. And every day of the week, we're going to do our, absolutely our best job for our customers and in relationships we have that are not even customer focused or just about doing the right thing for Threat intelligence sharing, for example, we're going to do that as best that we know how, right? And if we keep doing all that, we think we can be part of a, a very engaged discussion with some of the best people in the world, and, and we can think big, right, and take that, take that as a responsibility and accountability as leaders in the industry to do that. Well, it's clear to me that, that we can take the cyber moonshot idea and make it a grand strategic objective, and it aligns with all the other things we've already been saying around t strategy, tactics, and operations. So I'm very positive about that and, and, and hopeful that, that we can actually meet this goal in 10 years. How hopeful are you that it will actually happen? Do you think, you know, give, give me some Vegas odds here. <laughs> <laughs> well, like you said, I... I have been and continue to be an optimist on on cyber, right? and uh, the reason for that, which I've said many times, is I said we just have to get it right. right. That's unsatisfying for a lot of people, by the way, because I'll say it's too important not to get it right. Right. You know, yeah. you know failure truly, is not truly. an option. Okay. Right. And uh, sometimes I say it's unsatisfying for folks as a foregone conclusion. I'm not trying to make it a foregone conclusion. I'm just trying to say that um, historically, uh, when things are that important. We've generally figured them out, right? Mm -hmm. Not completely success. I'm not calling, you know, it's not, we, we've, we've had, we haven't eradicated all disease, for example, right? Cancer. But we have made great strides mm -hmm. you know, in making things better and better and better over time because we were focused on them. I think that's true for cyber, um, and I think that it's possible we could make enormous strides in 10 years' time. I wouldn't propose it otherwise, uh, but the clock is ticking, and we really need to think differently. Final thoughts? Well, I really appreciate all the work you're doing as well. I think the uh, the zero trust model is exactly the right model. It's really resonating well with uh, the customers, with thought leaders, with folks in academics, folks in government. You know, it's fantastic uh, thinking. Fits very well with the strategic framework that we've gone through before. And um, I'm really glad that you're doing that. And Thank you. Get a mind meld here. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great to have you on the team. Thanks. thanks. Well, thanks, Mark, for joining us today. Uh, I'm John Kindervog, field CTO for Palo Alto Networks, and thank you for tuning in.